What's going on drivers? Welcome to Trucking with Old Snapper. If you're new to the channel, smash that like and subscribe button. It'll be down here in one of these corners. Anyway, hope all of you out there are doing great. Staying out of trouble, staying safe, all that good stuff. I have a uh, have a load of chemicals here on a flatbed. Loaded totes. Going up to uh, Utah. Running up 550 right now. I'm about an hour and a half, maybe two hours outside of Farmington, New Mexico. Figured to talk a little bit and y'all could cruise with me and we'll just uh, kick back and BS as we travel down the road here. Running down 550 at the moment. I think I said that a while ago. But anyway, I want to talk about some things. There's been some things I've been thinking about. Y'all know as uh, if you've been around my channel for any period of time that I'm kind of against the hourly forcing companies to pay hourly. You know, I'm not I'm not real big on that. And I, I've talked about that and talked about my reasoning for that in uh, other videos, which I'll link down in the description. If y'all want to hear those, y'all can go check them out. But I thought I would touch on something that somebody was talking to me about. It kind of opened my eyes to something that I hadn't really thought about before. A friend of mine works over at Creek Carriers, and I'm not going to put his name out there because I don't want Creek, you know, getting mad at him for thinking or talking this way. But uh, he made a point, and it's something that uh, I hadn't really thought about. You know, I'd like to see companies have a choice as to where they want to pay us by the miles, pay us percentage, pay us hourly, all that kind of stuff. But something I think that we're lacking is compensation for the things that we do outside of driving down the road. I mean, this is mainly for the guys that are paid by the mile, you know. So let's say you're working at Creek Carriers and you're making 65 cents a mile or 70 cents a mile, whatever it is they're paying right now, all right? Well, they're paying you when you drive, right? But you gotta do a pre-trip, you gotta do a post-trip, you gotta get fuel, all right? And all of that's just, as drivers, we've accepted it as, hey, that's just part of the job, that's just part of what we do because we've been kind of programmed that way. We've been programmed to think that way. And to be honest with you, that's wrong. And over the generations, we've just accepted it because as you'll hear drivers say sometimes, that's trucking, you know, that's trucking. But is it really, or is it just, we, we've accepted it and we allow, allow it to happen. So that's what happens. Because if drivers didn't accept it, then it wouldn't happen. They got to have drivers. But here's the point that, that he made that made a lot of sense to me. You take a dispatcher, for example. Let's say a dispatcher at Creek Carriers. They're probably getting paid by the hour. I don't know for certain. But I'm pretty sure they probably get paid by the hour. Let's say that dispatcher starts his job at 8 o'clock in the morning. He has to be clocked in and at his desk by 8 o'clock in the morning. But boss man comes to the dispatcher, whatever they call them, the lead dispatcher, whatever, <laughs> head dispatcher. He comes over to the dispatcher and he tells him, says, hey, tomorrow morning I want you to come in at 7 o'clock. I want you to take out the trash, boot your computer up, and clean the restrooms. But you can't clock in until 8 o'clock. And I need those things done before 8 o'clock because at 8 o'clock I need you at your desk working and then at 9 15 i want you to clock out i want you to go out there and wash my car come back in here and clock back in you know simulate us getting fuel right how how well would that go over i mean anybody looking at that be like no you're crazy i guarantee you there's not a dispatcher out there that would do that Oh, look at this idiot. Huh. Yeah, that guy there is suicidal. But anyhow, there's not a dispatcher in the world that's going to do that. There's nobody out there working by the hour that's going to do that. It's not going to happen. Now, as some of y'all know, before I drove trucks, I was an industrial electrician. Did that for many years before driving trucks. I got into driving trucks when the economy was bad been doing it ever since 
And uh, granted, we didn't get paid from the moment we pulled in the parking lot, but we didn't do no work. You know, if we had a meeting, if we had a safety meeting before we started work, if, if uh, whatever the case may be, we were on the clock for that. You know, so if our time started at seven o'clock in the morning, that's when we were on the clock, we might show up and be sitting around drinking coffee or drinking sodas or water or whatever at six or 6.30 in the morning, kind of BSing with each other, but we weren't doing any work. And if we had a meeting or anything, anything that was work related, it didn't start till after seven o'clock in the morning because we were on the clock. I know 15, 20 years ago, Walmart actually got themselves in a bind because at one time they were having meetings like little 15 minute work meetings or whatever that everybody was required to come to and they weren't paying for it. They didn't have to clock in. And for years that went on, nobody thought nothing of it. It was a little 15 minute meeting. It might happen once a month, but somebody somewhere caught a snap to it and that all changed. Now Walmart makes you clock in before your meetings if you have to come in for a meeting and you're not on the clock. You know, so I think in some ways we're kind of, we've accepted it as the norm, but it's not normal and we screw ourselves. You know, getting out here doing doing this kind of stuff and, 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 and not getting paid for it. You know, work we've done over the years and not been paid for. And that's just something I was running through my mind, kind of thinking about it. I'm curious what y'all's thoughts are. You know, something else is, especially with mega carriers, this is something that really resonates with the uh, mega carriers. If you're working for one or have worked for one, you're probably going to know exactly what I'm talking about as I start talking about this. But you're almost like a hamster in a hamster wheel. And these companies will program you mentally to accept things that they want you to accept. You know, like the one day off or every six days out. I know at one time Creed, I'm not sure if they still are, but at one time Creed was trying to clock it at 24 hour intervals. So if you got home at three o'clock in the afternoon on Friday, three o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday, that was one day, you know, and that's the way they were trying to clock it. And I know some other companies do that as well. Something I always found kind of crazy about that. A day off's a day off. If I worked today, I, I wasn't off today. Even if I got home today, I wasn't off, I worked. Whether I worked till nine o'clock this morning, noon, or three o'clock in the afternoon, I worked. That's not a day off. Tomorrow is a day off if I didn't work all day. And the next day is a day off, right? And uh, to me, that's, that's normal. But these trucking companies try to program you to look at it a little different way. You know, same thing with the production. I know Creed, if your production drops, they'll write you up. You know, because your production's not at what they want it to be at or whatever there. That's just like a hamster in a wheel, man, or a hamster in a maze. You know, they're, they're trying to get you to chase that cheat. And I think as drivers, we've accepted a lot of things that we shouldn't accept. Yes, we need to be loyal to our companies. Yes, we need to make money. Yes, in order to do that, we need to make our company money. But at what cost does it come? If you watched my last video, you heard me talk about time and the value of time. When I'm laying on my deathbed in a hospital somewhere and they tell me I'm dying and I look back on my life, you know, am I gonna be proud of it? Am I gonna wish that I spent more time with my kids? Am I gonna wish I spent more time with my parents? And yes, I understand all these things take money and all these things take you have to, having to have a job unless you get lucky enough to win the lottery or drop $20 on a slot machine and never have to work again. You know, all these things require us to have a job. But we trade our time and a skill for compensation. You know, Earl Nightingale, I don't know if, if, any, if any of y'all have ever read any of his books or listened to him or... uh Another one's Napoleon Hill. He talks about that as well. The only people that make money work in a mint. Everybody else earns money. 
So like being out here, we're earning money. We're not making money, we're earning it. We're trading our time and a skill for a compensation. Now, is it worth, uh, sometimes it might be a little, it might be worth making a little less money for a little more time, right? It depends on how you value your time. What's your time worth? You know, is your time worth spending two, three weeks at a time out on the road or a month at a time out on the road? At my first couple of years driving, I only went home a couple times a year. And I regret that. I wish I'd have never gotten that happen. You know, and I didn't realize how much of my life I gave up being over the road. And that's why with these new guys, I don't suggest they stay out there all that long. Do a year, do do two years, you know, whatever you got to do to get your experience and get the hell off of it. Get home. Because if you spend your life on the road, you're not going to have a life. You're not going to have a social life. You're not going to have a lot of things that other people have. I remember one time it was a holiday. I think I was in California. It might have been Christmas or uh or New Year's, it was it was in the winter time, it was around that time of year. I remember going through this town and I was taking back roads and you could see the kids out there playing with their toys and I'd just gotten off the phone with my family and listening to what they had going on at home. And it was like all of a sudden an epiphany hit me that my light just went off, you know, like what am I doing? What the hell am I doing? You know, is is it really worth this? I mean, think about it. Time is limited. We don't have an unlimited amount of time. Each and every one of us is going to die. Each and every single person listening to this video right now, and he, and myself included, one day our loved ones are going to drop us in the ground. You know, so maybe we do need to spend a little more time focusing on trying to make a living and getting that quality time with our family as well trying to get both you know my priorities over the last few years have changed and definitely over the last few months you know I've been home a lot I'm getting a life I'm you know uh, got a little family at the house and and all that kind of stuff and it's really changed my perspective on a lot of things and yeah, I love trucking. Don't get me wrong. I love trucking to death. I uh, enjoy it. I enjoy being out here. But definitely, I definitely need to work on that balance. And some of y'all out here that have just started driving, or maybe you're within your first year, or you've been out here a couple years, you know, I'm talking about this stuff more for, for your sake, so you don't get farther down the line and realize, man, I wish I'd have balanced this out a little bit more. You know, maybe it'd have been worth going to work for that local company and making a little bit less money to have a little bit more time with my family. You know, or maybe it'd have been worth going to work for Cisco and loading and unloading my trailer. Because, I mean, you can go to work for Cisco Foods and make 100000 a year. A lot of them food carriers that deliver to the little stores and stuff they they do 100k a year you have to load your own truck and unload it at your stops you know but maybe it's worth that to get that time at home coca-cola pays really well maybe it's worth that to get that time at home to have a better quality of life because this life we live we only get to live it once there's no do-over button there's no rewind button Yes, I'm blessed to have seen all the things I've seen out here. I've seen a lot of things on the road. I'm, even the view you are looking at out the window, there's a lot of people that go their whole lives and never get to see it. I'm blessed to have done all that. But I really wish I'd have spent more time with my family. I really wish I'd have focused more on my social life. And uh, prioritize that time. You don't really get to thinking about that time until you get older. When you get older, you start to prioritize it a little bit different. And I'm going to tell you right now, these companies, they give two shits less. They might tell you they care about you and they want you to have quality time at home and we're going to do this, we're going to do that. You do this for us and we're going to do that for you. And that's the way it should be. 
Well, that's not the way it is. You're a hamster in a wheel, and they're trying to get as many turns out of you as they can get. And trying to do it for as little money as possible. Because they're getting their time with their family. But they're not you, and you can't blame them. That's not their focus. They don't know your kids. They don't know your wife. They don't know your girlfriend. You know, they don't care if you go to sleep alone at night or, or what the deal. They don't care what your life is. They care about you getting that load from point A to point B. That way that check can come in. The only person on this earth that's going to look out for you and your best interest and the best interest of your family is yourself. That's it. There ain't nobody else out here going to look, look out for you and, and what's best for you and your family. So drivers, you got to do what's best for you and your family. Pick up that phone. Look on Google. Ask around. Try to find something where you can get that time with your family. If you're a youngster out there listening, I'm telling you, Bob, you're going to wish you did one day. You know, don't, don't follow in that track. Just because I made those mistakes, I went down that road, I don't want you to go down that road. You know, I got a, I got a stepson out here at Prime right now going through the training program. And if he was on here right now, he'd tell you, I told him, as soon as you, as soon as you get through with what's required of you by Prime, get you a local job. We got Chalk Mountain right there at the house, 83,000 a year, home daily. They work a 4-2 schedule, and it ain't ain't no work. It's all in frack sand, but you just drive back and forth. 12 hour shifts, you know, 83,000 a year ain't bad. You know, I mean, and there's a bunch of other companies that are similar to that. You know, at one time I used to preach that over the road stuff. I thought, I had something to prove, you know, I had something to prove to myself and I had something to prove to other people that I could do it, that I could stay out for weeks or months at a time. Man, I ain't got nothing to prove to nobody no more. I done been there and done that. And as I've gotten older, I've realized that it really doesn't matter. Nobody remembers that. You think I can go back and talk to the trucking company back whenever I was on paper logs and I ran 34 hours straight in order to make a load up in Pittsburgh. You think they remember that? They done spent that money a long time ago. They don't remember that, nor do they care. Nobody does. I'm the only one that remembers the time I did that. I'm the only one that remembers the sacrifices I made out here. Nobody else does. So, what's the point of it? You ain't got nothing to prove to nobody, driver. You just don't hit nothing. You do the best job you can. You be safe, try to do your job to the best of your ability and all that kind of stuff. You know, you be loyal to your company as much as they're loyal to you. And that's all that matters. You know, but I think a, I think a lot of us drivers need to prioritize our home time. We need to prioritize spending time with our families. And if you're out there on the road right now and you don't have a social life and you're just living on the road and you're thinking, man, I ain't got it. It doesn't matter. Because there was a time when I was like that. My kids were grown. I was over the road. And I really didn't care. Like, I ain't got no life anyway. What's it matter? You know, but if you'll slow down a little bit and get off the road, you will get a life. It will come. It takes time. It takes a few months. But you will get a life. You know, there's another driver I like to watch on TikTok. I think he's on YouTube also, but I, I like his TikTok. Scrambled North. He's a driver for Walmart. Makes really good money. Walmart takes care of him, and he does his job, and he does it well. He's safe at work. Delivers everything on time. But you'll see in his videos, man, he's out camping. Or he's at the bar shooting pool. Or, you know, he's, he's, he's taking his motorcycle and riding up to Alaska. You know, I mean, he has prioritized both parts of his life and he's found a way to do it where he still makes a living and he has his life, you know, and he's able to have a life outside of his job. You go out here and talk to these electricians or these plumbers or welders or any any regular job. Their whole life isn't work. They don't get done doing electrical on a house and then go to sleep in the living room and then get up 10 hours later and go back to doing electrical on a house. We do that shit. 
We're the ones that put in all that time. Even though we're on a 10-hour break out here or a 34-hour reset, you ain't at home. You're in this box. You're in this. And, and if any of you have ever been to jail before, you know that a cell is bigger than most of these drugs. You know, now granted, I wouldn't want to be in jail. Don't don't take it like that. But a cell is bigger than most of these drugs. It's wild what we sacrifice for the compensation that we get. And all of us have to ask ourselves, is it worth it? What am I doing? Because I'm going to tell you now, this time you're putting out, you can't get it back. It ain't coming back. This time I'm on the road. This day I'm on the road. Right now, I can't get it back. Whatever's happening at home is happening. There's nothing I can do. I'm not there. I can call and talk to them on speaker or, or FaceTime, which is really cool. Because when I first started driving, I couldn't do that. And it's really nice to be able to do that, but it's not the same. Now, does that mean I need to quit my job and be home all the time? No. No, you got to have a job. But what we allow will continue. And as drivers, we really need to prioritize that. And especially with these mega carriers that are pushing some of these drivers to drive for weeks and months on end. You know, drivers shouldn't be putting up with that. And if they start leaving, that kind of stuff starts changing. People start refusing to do it, that kind of stuff starts changing. Something else my buddy over at Crete was talking about that I hadn't really put much thought into. I think as drivers, or let me let me rephrase this. First, I want to start off with the with the phrase, what we allow will continue. If you allow somebody to disrespect you, they're going to continue to disrespect you. If you allow somebody to steal from you, they're going to continue to steal from you, right? Well, it's no different than anything in life. What we as drivers allow is what will continue. If we don't allow it, it doesn't continue as long as it's reasonable, right? And I don't think anything we've talked about in this video is unreasonable. But one of the things he said was truckers really need truckers really need a spokesman. They need you know, need a group of people, four or five people or, or ten people that kind of stand up and push what drivers are wanting right and we're supposed to get that out of old Ida. we're supposed to get that out of the ata and as y'all know we don't get that they probably don't even have a driver you know actually up there advising anything most of those people are politicians and lobbyists and they're just worried about the money they can they can get in their pocket out of it and really they work more for the mega carriers than they do for anybody they don't work for us now I don't think I'm that guy because somebody that needs to do that's got to be really charismatic and uh, highly intelligent with both knowledge of driving, having been out here, and in politics, both ends of it. I ain't that guy. But I'm sure out of all of these drivers out here that there's someone. There's someone with that ability. And uh, I think it's needed for sure, you know, for, for all of us. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Y'all take care. Stay safe. I hope y'all have enjoyed the view. I've been kind of kicked back running 65, 67. I'm going to go ahead and put the hammer down and get on down the road. Y'all take care. Stay safe. Until next time, keep trucking.